Okay. Yep. Okay. I got to do this. Hey, everybody. We want to welcome you to Heart to Heart with uh, Dan and Angela. And we're going to be talking today about the Worldwide Church of God and uh, its offshoots. Yeah, well, the Worldwide Church of God, Truth Seekers and its offshoots is my Facebook and group. I have a group also. Um, so YouTube channel, well, uh, Facebook page and a group. Yes. Worldwide Truth Seekers. And, uh, That's Worldwide Truth Seekers. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and we just want to thank you, um, Sarah, for coming forward today. You, you know, I think, and, and you probably know this, I know you know this, but one of the greatest parts of healing is where when we come out of denial, when we can say, um, you know, this this wasn't always, you know, a total good thing, you know, the Worldwide Church of God, or, or it had a bad side to it. I, I We've interviewed some Worldwiders before or talking to a lot of Worldwiders, and so many of them are in denial. When, when you ask them, you know, when you say, you know, this happened or that happened or this happened, they yes. go, oh, it was wonderful. Oh, it was it was great. We got to take the good with the bad. Or like the witnesses say, they're just men doing the best they can do. But making what, excuses for them. Yeah. And what we found was that kind of that kind of response doesn't promote healing. But what promotes healing is the absolute truth. Can we say the yuck? Can we say, yeah, okay, yes. it, it did some of this for me, some of this good, brought some order, uh, you know, whatever, you know. But it also did this. And that's what I find most interesting, that a lot of worldwiders are in, still in denial about, so about that. Mean, most. most. So, I think there's like a, some shame or, or fear there that we don't even realize is there. And sometimes, and fear, like it's sometimes it's just easier to not talk about it because so many people just can't, it, it's hard to explain and understand. Uh, yeah. unless you've it, it, it feel like, I guess, like you're tattletaling or something. I remember you do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. The witnesses, I remember it was like, man, I'm talking about the leadership, the governing body. You know, I still had them held in that high esteem. But I find, honestly, there is no healing without coming out of denial. There isn't. It's the same as a 12-step. Until you can say, I have this problem, you know, blah, blah, blah. We don't get well if we just shove it down. And so many of them do that. So, so, so Sarah, thank you, thank you for so coming much. forward. And thank we want to hear your story. And we want to hear it in, in detail, you, you know, some of the wounds that being in a cult creates yeah you know what i mean and and, and i think yeah. you can call it a cult i, oh, I mean yeah. it's high control yeah. Yeah. but tell us well, oh angela wanted, wanted to introduce you angela wanted okay. to introduce you all right okay yes. <laughs> so today we're interviewing sarah aaron holtz a former worldwide church of god attender sarah began attending worldwide church of god with her mother beginning at age five she actually grew up on a farm in iowa and then her her mother drove her and her siblings her two siblings an hour or an hour and a half, she thinks it was, yeah. now, one way to go to out of state to Nebraska and go to church at the Worldwide Church of God. And that was 1984, where she began attending with her with her mother and siblings. Her yes. father never attended the church. Sarah, and so Sarah had the, the two older siblings who also attended. However, they did keep the whole, the holidays like Christmas and all, all of that, which Sarah actually never was able to do. And then, of course, that stopped when her mother started taking them to church. Um, the pastor at that time was Mr. Swaggerty. Sarah is the mother of one daughter, Isabella, now a grown adult, and currently lives in Oregon. Today, Sarah is going to focus on the medical neglect and the resulting effects wow. on our health to the point of death. Many die in medical neglect, uh, neglect due to improper care. And Sarah will be sharing just what she experienced and her witness in the Worldwide Church of God. I believe that the first step toward our healing is awareness. Awareness is key. So let's get into this. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you. For thank you. Here. Thank you so much for that introduction. And uh, uh, thank you for um, having this channel for people to tell their story and have yeah. a chance to heal. Um, so uh, like uh, Angela said, uh, we joined in 1984. I was five. I'm the youngest of two siblings. Um, my mom actually got a hold of, um, I believe it was the Plain Truth magazine from my grandma. And then she called the number on there and they came out to our house and drove. And I remember later telling me she was very impressed by them coming so far. 
Um, and then I know we started going. Um, now for me, I, I, you know, it's affected all my siblings, obviously. Um, they, I think, have some memories of holidays. I don't. I don't remember celebrating like a birthday or a Christmas, you know, Easter, Valentine's. Any, I don't remember that. Um, now, I, we joined and I remember, you know, we're, I'm on a blanket. And at, this was also just very odd. No, no, no toys, no coloring books, no, no nothing. And if you made a sound, then you were taken to the, you know, bathroom and spanked. Or I remember being pinched. So it was very weird for a child. You became all of a sudden not a child very quickly. You weren't doing normal things. Someone had to sit there on this blanket and you numbed yourself. Well, what else could you, you do? Your, I'm five. Well, I can't sure. be an, even a normal kid. And that was normal. I mean, that was, they, they didn't want you playing. And, you know, so I think that's why I heard more than what my mom maybe realizes I heard too, because I wasn't playing on my blanket. And you so were, I, every kid was sitting there. You, you talked about the blanket training. Um, yes. I, I totally forgot about that. It was a barely a remembrance in my mind, but my mom had six children and I was the oldest, but I, when you said that, I'm like, oh my gosh, I do remember something about what is it. That? And I asked my mom, I said, mom, did you do blanket training? And anyway, she said, yes, yeah, she did. And that, um, and then, so what she said was, cause see, I, I was it started at birth as well. So honestly, yes, I was one of the lucky right. ones. So she, yeah, I mean, I was only five when I joined. So yeah. some kids were getting little smacks on the hand for crying just for, a normal response. You right. could be hungry, just you know. So, what it also did was it somehow made your the nurturing that a mother normally would give a child. The cult had a way of taking that away and making you not have that bond. I feel like with your mother, in a sense, because. You know, I've asked myself, how, you know, why, why? I think we all do. Like, why? And if you see it normalized with all these other mothers and the kids taking them into the bathrooms and whooping them, it's going to be a little easier for you to maybe disassociate or as well as a mother, I think, yeah. and be like, well, this is what we're doing. It was spare the rod, spoil the child. Do you remember that? I remember that. That was, that so was we, really big saying. Will you tell the audience, because see, not everyone listening is going to be an uh, ex worldwide or a, a world wider. Some are XJW, so they don't know what blanket training is. Could you explain what you remember blanket training being? Do you, or can I? Or I just remember you? that, you know, it started very young at birth and basically anything that a child, a baby would do, you know, they weren't allowed to. They were taken out and they were they were supposed to be smacked or spanked and told no, you know, um, it was very much so. And then it just progressed. Then it became they taught you to use a wooden paddle or a ping pong paddle um, and literally that it wouldn't leave bruises, but you could do what you needed to do. Right. But it wouldn't leave bruises on the child. So, you know, um, was that we, for not I had paying a, attention? For not paying attention, you had to. Pay uh, you know, and I don't even know. That was more at home. I got the more the wooden. We got the the wooden um, uh, ping pong paddle, paddle. and mm -hmm. even got broke on um, you know our bottoms. And yes. I, you know, I remember my mom crying while spanking me, and then we had to hug her and tell her we loved her before we could leave the room. Ooh. Now tell me, like she was not, she wasn't liking what she was doing. I don't feel like, but. That's what, you know, well, she and was I, told to I do. Said, um, I spank you because I love you. That's what they Oh, love. absolutely. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. You and, just reminded me. Yeah, I'm and, doing this for your own good. You, you know, go. I'm doing it because I love because you. Because I love you. And then also the bank blanket training, you told me and my mom had verified it, that they would do it at home to practice for the two hour session at church. Yes. So my mother, yes. would, all, we had six children. So we'd all have to sit on this big blanket and she would um, give the bottles to the babies and then she'd have the rest of us, uh, you know, kind of take a nap and she would practice all the time. Yeah, so you had to practice because you couldn't have toys or coloring books or anything. So that's not normal for a kid to sit there for two hours in a sermon. No, no. And, and why so that's why you there. had to practice and, you know, and 
Right. And then it's yeah. like, don't, don't yep. do it. If the kid starts crying, I was the oldest. So I'd have to quick take that kid and comfort it and keep it from crying. And I was allowed to sit in the chair finally. But, you know, those children have to sit on the floor at age five, sitting That's on the crazy. floor on a blanket. Yeah. Sarah, you should have sat on a chair at five. Well, you know, Sarah. I, oh, I know. Well, and then, but as soon as you could sit on a chair, guess what? You graduated to a chair as soon as you could start writing notes. Oh, and then you sat on a chair and then you wrote notes for two hours. That's That's right. right. It was all about paying attention to Herbert W. Armstrong. You had to sit on that blanket. So, but as soon as you could write and you could write notes, oh, you were up on the chair. That's right. So I forgot. That's what I, you know, something weird, Sarah, I saw a video and Angela did too. And it was a video of a church leader and he was disciplining a boy. And I think he took him over his knee and spanked him. Now this is weird. Yeah. This is gonna. This is really, audience. really weird to me in front of the audience. And then he said, "I'm disciplining you," and he spanked him. And then he goes, "Now let's make up." And he says, "Give yeah. me a kiss. Give me a." It was like this he love. Sounds like my mom. It was like you just spanked me, but yet I have to now show I'm a child. Yeah, yeah. And okay. I, we weren't allowed to leave that bedroom until we hugged her and told her that we loved her. Wow. It was. Wow. It was traumatizing, wow. but it was. You know, and I know it was partly because she didn't want to do it. I don't think really like because it was weird. Like I said, she was crying while spanking. Like that just seems odd Going to me against too, right? Her own nature. Yeah, 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 exactly. Doesn't that seem like it's against her? Or, like, yes. yeah, like she was like, I don't want to do this, but I have to. Oh what? God. Like that's yeah. how it felt. I mean, she wasn't saying those words, but if your mom's like bawling while spanking you. And then what? make, yeah, yeah. It was a very weird. What did your and dad say? The thing is, is it also went quite older. You know, spanking's usually younger. Oh. I'm talking, this went to, I felt inappropriate. You know, my brother and I were too old to get our pants pulled down and oh, still yeah. getting whoopings. Yeah. So this went on for, I can't mean tell, quite old, 10, 11. Oh, yeah. You know, I felt like it in, it probably went on for a lot of kids, even older than that, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. but I just dad, remember it. What'd your dad do? But what did he feel? What did he say? What did he, well, he wasn't, he didn't believe, right? Yeah. He really, really struggled, but I also had, you know, health issues, which we'll get into that, which, you know, um, yeah, down the road. So, um, but yeah, I remember the blanket training um, and you're you're right. So I had a best friend. I still have her. I'm not gonna say her name, but I I'm I'm gonna give her the name Grace because she was my saving grace back then and still is to this day. We talk a lot and we've done I feel like a lot of healing actually together the last couple of years and kind of have figured some things out. Like, oh, do you remember this? And you know, um, I had a traumatizing event happen to me in 2022, and that's for me, what sparked me getting into therapy. And all of a sudden I started remembering a lot of events. So this is all pretty recent for me as well um, to just start remembering, you know, all this stuff. Um, Now, another thing, I'm just going to kind of still talk about what it was like growing up. So we had the blanket training. You also, so we had Sabbath was on Saturday and Sabbath started from sundown Friday till, uh, or sat. Yeah. Sorry. Sabbath started from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday and you couldn't watch TV, do activities. You couldn't run, you know, the adults couldn't work that affected, you know, yeah, money. TV. They weren't, they weren't allowed to work. I remember, you know, um, and so what this also did for a child, you have to think of for the social aspect. So I couldn't go out for any sports. If there was a concert, I couldn't go to it. That's on a Friday night, right? Usually all those things. And they did it to ostracize, keep us away from the, the world, you know, the worldly people is what they would call and be careful for the demons. You know, everybody that wasn't in, you know, felt like in the chosen church uh, cult, uh, you know, uh, was a demon, watch out for them, um, kind of thing. And, um, I, like I was also in, put in yeah. um, you know, the library and principal's offices for holiday events. So say they big Christmas parties, you know, or they dressed up for Halloween. Guess where I got put? I couldn't, I didn't get to partake in any of that. I got put in the library principal's office and 
that might not seem like a big deal. Big deal. But that is, that's when you know you are not the same as everybody else. And everybody knows you're not the same too. You just are odd. You're just an oddball. You stick out in school. Um, a lot of people thought I was uh, gave me happy Hanukkah cards when I got older. So they didn't really understand, you know, you didn't talk about it. Um, but that, that was really hard. You definitely did some weird talk in your head to yourself, you know, Oh, I'm, I'm the chosen, I'm, you know, special. And I'm doing this because I'm going to get the world's going to end. And I'm going to go to the place of safety in Petra Jordan. And, you know, if I celebrate these things and I'm going to die in the lake of fire, that's literally what it was. Um, if you don't know about Worldwide Church of God, the cult, it was a fear-based, apocalyptic, doomsday cult. It was very, very fear-based. Yes. That's how they got us to tithe our money. That's how they got us to just kind of um, get us to... You know, and they, he used, uh, Herbert W. Armstrong was, used a lot of the news. Um, and I, they still do. You know, they use a lot of the news events to scare you um, and to tell you the world's going to end. And they, they'll just keep changing, you know, kept changing when it was going to end and when it was going to end. Because it, wow. it, it wasn't happening, things like that, you know. Um, but, yeah, it was very, very, uh, very, very hard as a child. Um Now, here's something that's, I tell a lot of people I'm ambidextrous, but I don't really tell them why. So I was already really weird school. I'm left-handed. I write and I eat with my left hand, but I, like, I can't really do, I'm injured now in this arm. But back in the day, this was my sports arm. You would have thought I was right-handed. And the reason for that is because I already was stuck out like a sore thumb because of the cold. So I didn't want to ask for special help in PE or certain things because I was left-handed. So I just learned. I learned how to cut with scissors with my right hand. Um, I shot basketball. I do vol- You would think I'm right-handed. And that's why. That's why I learned. Why did just you never, learn? Why did you learn? I just that? never told anybody that because like, is it bad you don't want to stick out. I was like the only. Like I, I our lived, daughter is left-handed yeah. and she couldn't cut hair. And no one could seem to be able to show her in the salon uh, beauty school how to use her left hand. Because they yeah. are right-handed. And so everything was all odd. So she could never quite figure it out. And it was really painful for her. And I think she finally yeah. got discouraged and she just got was done with it. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, um, and that's what, was what happened to me is I learned just how to cut scissors. It was really, really hard. Wow. I remember I struggled, but I don't even think they had left-handed scissors. I I was in a really small town, yeah. really I, small I school know. too. So when I say I stuck out, I stuck out. Yeah, and you know, and I grew up on a farm in the Midwest. So, um, you know, it it, it was definitely um, very hard. And then you but would you um, on a farm. She lived on a farm. Yeah. So did, did your school friends live on farms? Um, Some of them. And then some of them lived in, in town as well. So, you know, I didn't have my, my friends were my uh, brother and sister. And then it was also uh, people that went to the church. And then what you would do is like in the summertime that you'd stay at one for like a week and then they, you'd meet them at the next Saturday and return the kid kind of. So those were the interactions. Like, you know, I didn't, if I got invited to a birthday party, I couldn't go, you know, um, and mine wasn't celebrated. So that was also more depressing than you, than you can imagine because it's the birth of yourself, (laughs) but yet you're not allowed to celebrate it. So I think it's a way to strip your self identity and for you to know you're not worthy and not feel self-worth and and feel, um, yeah. And they, the, the mom kind of does that too. They make you feel like that too, because of the weird bonding they have going on. So, yeah, so you know, right away, God's ahead of her. You, you know, don't bother her. She's in the bedroom yeah. and she's down on her knees doing Bible study for two hours. You know, you could have an emergency. Don't interrupt her. You know, you better be dying. You and know, so and- we would be hungry, but we couldn't interrupt mom, you know, and she's Bible study. Yeah, I forgot what I was going to say. I was going to interject something here. Sorry. 
<laughs> no, no, you're fine. You're doing great. Can I just go back to the Sabbath? Absolutely. I get hammered by world widers over the Sabbath. I mean, when, when you, you know, Saturday comes or if I'm working, you know, people will say, you know, that that's the Sabbath. We have to keep it holy. Now, I was going to ask you this. Does yeah. not keeping the Sabbath mean that the people in the world that don't keep the Sabbath are going to die? Is that the teaching in Herbert W. Yeah, yep. I believe that. Yep. I believe that's part okay. of it. Yeah, the whole thing. Yep. And we didn't believe in like the Trinity. So yes. like, I remember we couldn't wear crosses and like, you know, there, it was just. It, yeah. So it I want to ask a question. So here was my question to the world widers. When they, when they come up with, oh, you don't keep the Sabbath. I don't want to hear anything you have to say. If you don't do this, keep the holy days. I don't want to hear anything you say. That is my grounding. That is my compass. That is my way, okay? But then I ask yep. this question. What about those who have to work on Saturday? Firemen, hospital people. You know, if it comes to saving a life on the Sabbath. Now, check this out. It yeah. is a law according yeah. to this religion, according to this. Now, now, they somehow, this is weird. This is a conundrum. Somehow the, the world widers justify the firemen working and the this working. They, they can't justify me working, but they can justify yeah. the hospitals working. They can adjust. Oh, well, there's a reason for that. <laughs> no, there is no reason. According yeah, to no, the way, yeah. go ahead. I remember there was no reason. There was no reason, not even a doctor or, you know, and they really we medically we didn't support doctors so that oh, could wow. be physically or mentally so if you like um i just recently started medicine for the first time i got diagnosed with adhd at 45 so you know um before we get into medical yeah. can we just real quick go to the birthdays i yeah. remember what my question was um, yes can you remind all of us why what the, how the world why use the bible to say that we cannot celebrate birthdays and my mother was also all about that well it will bring bring pride and um you know and so in other words we should have no no worthiness no uh, that's exa exactly right that's how i remember like it then, word. Mm, yeah. uh, it's it's, it's it was like pride. you were special yeah. more special than god or you were like just celebrating yourself as, yes pride was a before yeah. fall yeah and that you know not worthy of it yeah and, and, exactly and we should not uh puff ourselves up with pride. I don't yes. know if saying that. So yeah. what, what was the scriptural uh, passage they used to say we can't celebrate birthdays? Oh, so I, I, I cannot remember it exactly, but I, I know I that there was one. a scripture they used. There was, I remember one of them and it was uh, the birthday of uh, Lot's children. No. Yeah. Yeah. Lot's, no, it was a lot. Um, uh, the the one the one that had those sons and they were always like partying together and then they were they were killed and um it was, wasn't it something to do with those those well there's also John the Baptist John the Baptist head was Job, cut off Job's on a birthday kids. right yeah Job's oh kids. yeah I had forgotten about that I'd <laughs> forgotten about that what to do with Job's sons remember they were yes. always partying all the time and uh, it seemed like it seemed like the world I remember something about that they were probably celebrating birthday, but they were celebrating and they were killed. I remember something. Yeah. About, uh, yeah his, his there was a story that they used and a scripture, like just to put that fear into you to not celebrate it. And uh, as well, you know, that was really depressing uh, as a kid. And like I said, I, it did something to like your identity of yourself it did. and your worth. It really did make yes, you feel did. not important. Right. Um, yeah. You yeah. felt so the reason you felt special is because you were chosen in the cult. <laughs> and you were the one that was going to know when to go to the place of safety, you know? Yeah. yeah think so, about your fear about that, that you were afraid that when you would leave uh, to go do something that you're afraid that somehow you would. Oh, I still that. have it. Okay, I still have it. That. Talk about what that's um, like. Yeah. So I actually, and I, I don't know, I guess I just thought everybody did this. I had a bag packed from the time I was five with clothes, a book and a toy. I was always ready to go um, place of safety. to the place of safety. I also think I really struggled oh, with wow. going to school just in general because I was always scared we were going to get the news when I was at school and I wanted to be with my mom. You know, like I just remember I wanted to be at home when we got the news. So I did struggle. And I think a lot of I started having health issues just even 
just because of all that and what it does to the the stress and the fear and in therapy she said my you know my dear i think you have been in fight flight mode since you were five wow. because of you know like the fear i had of you know having a bag packed and all this stuff um so i think she, witnesses have yeah. adopted this i i do I think no, Jehovah's we, Witnesses. We it no, 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 no. Jehovah's Witnesses have now adopted this because now they're fleeing. They're packing bags. Oh, they have together, they're running fire drills in the hall, um, oh. evacuation drills right now. And they have it to go. Wow. So I'm thinking that Jehovah's Witnesses have now adopted, they don't call it Petra, but they're fleeing to the place of safety the in the camp. woods, yeah. FEMA camp. Yeah. Very similar, very similar, you know, they, place of they, safety. They have money yep. showing, you know, you're going, you're fleeing with your, some people taking their things, which they discourage to show up at the FEMA camp. And then you're going to be there until Jehovah tells you that it's, you know, it's okay to go to do. Whatever. Oh yeah. And then I think we would be the teachers for the other people, right. Yes, As I in the that. place of safety, yes. like, <laughs> you know, for the, yeah, yeah. It was, huh. It, it, it's it's a lot, you know, and it's it's crazy how they reel you in. I think it's definitely on people. And that's what makes me really sad is it's um, lonely, usually depressed people looking for friendship, things like that. And no, so and these and cults don't. really prey on wonderful, big hearted, genuine people. So everybody's like, you know, I think that's another thing. It's the shame. That's why people don't want to talk about it because it's like, how could you be in a cult? Like, how could that even happen? Well, a lot easier than you think, actually. Right. How about yeah. you're born into it pretty much? Like, you know, you and I. Yeah, if you're born into it, exactly. You know, and, you know, my there's a lot of adults that get pulled in. There, you know, so Herbert W. Armstrong was an advertising first, so he was good at his job, very, very right. good at it. With all he used all of our tithe money for his booklets, his two magazines, you know. Yeah, um, he so used all of our our ties that we did, and there was lots and lots of ties. Thir three yeah. ties, I think. Yeah, well, three every seven years. I can't remember how many I, I have it somewhere, but every so many years, I think it's seven, maybe you have to pay a third tithe, which is extra money for the widows. Uh -huh. the first tithe is your 10% off the top of everything that you earn. The second tithe is supposed to be for the Feast of Tabernacles, which is a holy day um, that's done once a year. And so we would save 10% for that. And you must save that at law. It's law. And then the third tithe to take care of the widows every so many years. And so it would rotate. Who is somebody? What about the, the one where you got to give them all your money at the, yeah, end, at of the end of the celebration? Case, they would just yeah. say, um, you know, if you have any leftover money and you're not going to need it for traveling back home, put it all in, you know, so for the God's yep. work, God's work. So they got a lot. Well, of and um, I think I shared with you, I found an old lesson plan, and it was like probably I think it would have been for kindergarten or first. So we had these lesson plans that I, were very, very stressful. And I, I felt like they were before homework even, and you had to memorize stuff that was really stressful as well. And well, at the end of one, and it was, a, um, it showed a kid and it showed him how to tithe correctly with your dimes and nickels and pennies and how much that would be. And I was just like, wow. wow. And I kind of remembered it as I was, because all these things that you, you're saying it's being copied, it's all online, so it'd be very easy to do and tweak it a little bit and say you came up with it. All the booklets, there's a, a website that has all the old sermons, books, lesson plans. It's I I have I go on there, but I have to be careful how much time I spend on there because it's overwhelming. Yeah, it was no, like www. No, hwalibrary.com. Hwalibrary.com. Yep. Yeah. Yes. So that is uh, has everything that I grew up with, and you know, yeah. The witnesses are adopting that too. We never used to have children giving their money. Now the children are being told to put their pennies. It's the same thing. They're copying. Yeah. I'm telling Isn't you. that crazy? Yeah. Well, I remember if I ever did get money, I tithed it. Like I don't, you know, I felt like oh, and I just it was a really big thing. Like you felt very proud to tithe the way that they. 
you know, projected. If you remember at the Feast of Tabernacles, they'd always make a really big deal of how much money they brought in. And I remember just feeling so proud I was a part of that, you know. Um, the Feast of Tabernacles, you know, was probably the favorite of most people. You know, that's where you got to go on a trip. And that that was the one I enjoyed the most. I got to see my best friend there. I looked forward to that. Yeah. But and our parents had extra. Um, you went to the Feast of Tabernacles. I think you were in school for maybe about two weeks. And then you got pulled out and you were taken away for 10 days and, you know, church all day, you know, long for all those days and some fun stuff in between. But that also. So can I talk about that? Because that was. Yeah. Really cool. So you guys, I want to reiterate what she said. School starts, you know, for us, it was September 15th ish. No. Yeah. Yeah. And then come October, literally just weeks away, it's time to go to the Feast of Tabernacles. So we would have to go to our public school teachers and tell yes, them we would. the Jewish holy day that we have to attend according to God's laws and that we need special treatment, imagine this in high school, to get homework from them and to, so we don't fail our classes for missing school for about 10 days for most of mm -hmm. us. So it's two weeks because if you travel to another country, or you had to drive a long way to go to this because we get to go where you want. There's all over the yep. world. You're all over the we world. usually went to South Dakota is where we oh. went. So how many days drive was that? Uh, I don't remember. Like, I think at least it was maybe two. two days. So it wasn't horrible. Um, and But I remember we'd have big signs. You know, we must have brought a lot of money to that town. So you felt special. Like they'd be like, welcome Worldwide Church of God. And we would have feast stickers on the back of your cars. So, you know, you would be traveling and then you kind of, you wave at, at the other people because you knew they, they knew who you were. Oh, there's a part. You, you it was the one place you didn't feel weird. I, let's put it that way you were surrounded by you know thousands of other people you just you felt a little normal at the feast I guess because you saw so many other people um doing the same thing you were doing you know because you didn't have that in school um so yeah that's when when do you make friends in the beginning of school right that's right. when you kind of make the clicks and you make the friendships and that's when you they the really the foundation of school is set so yeah, I think I was okay when I was in younger, but as I got older, I really, really struggled. And my grades did with catching back up. Right. And the teachers, and were, teachers were not nice to you about oh, getting that oh, homework. 10 days. It ten, yeah, that's about how long we wow. were. Just because the whole feast was uh, eight days. And yep. then, because the last grade. And then there's traveling. And then the traveling time. So you, You'd have to get back. It could even be 14 for yeah. some because you're, you know, you're traveling. So that's two weeks of school. That's a lot of school to miss. That's a lot of school. If you miss a day of school, it feels like you're oh, a month behind sometimes, let alone. So you can only imagine, like when I was younger, it was fairly easy. But as it got older, you, I missed still to this day, I've, I've missed like a lot of foundation stuff or just stuff I feel like I don't know. Like how do and people just look like how do you not know that I must I always feel like it must have been when I was at the feast <laughs> right. or when I was out sick or so you know because I missed a lot back. for sickness because when you get back you feel like everybody's judging you and your teacher is looking at you like you're such a piece oh and they are they yeah. totally are they're like oh she's back where have you been and right. it's weird and I like you disrespect know. to the teacher yeah, yeah. well really? and then you get back and then guess what then it's holiday 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 so then it's Halloween and Easter. thanksgiving and christmas back to back when you get back yeah so then i feel like that's another reason why they did it and you know shoved all that stuff down you because you're about to you know all those holidays you know and coming back and you know everybody's excited from christmas break telling everybody what they got oh what'd you get oh i don't celebrate christmas <laughs> you just really had to like numb yourself yeah it, 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 i remember it, just kind of being like this you know i don't celebrate christmas yeah. You just kind of had to sit there on those days and kind of internally, it, I don't know what you did internally, but you had to do something to survive because you were the only one that couldn't, you couldn't fit in. You didn't, you couldn't talk about it, that. It was terrible. Like, okay, so you go to a band class. I had, I played clarinet. And I'm two weeks behind mm. everyone else. And, and they've all been working every day for two weeks on this music. 
and I'm suddenly yeah. two weeks behind. And to catch up means countless hours at home practicing your, your clarinet when your mom is demanding you do all these other things. And you've lesson got plans, and, you've yeah. got other homework besides. And so you just freak, you just yeah. are never as good as everyone else. You can never be first chair, means that you're the That's exactly how it feels. Team. So a perfectionism, I think, can come. Well, I think a lot of people can struggle with that perfectionism oh, because yeah. of just so yeah. much they put on you and you're never good enough. Well, you know, you well, never are. Well, Even you know, if you're perfect, have straight A's, or you're still well, not good enough. Well, then unless, um, in my senior year in high school, we had a lot of marching band. Oh, I miss so much. And then and then my mother, um, well, my, my, my teachers, when I come back, then it would be just um, so discombobulated where I was an editor of my school newspaper and now I don't know what's going on. I don't know where we're at. I don't know. It's yeah. I just feel so traumatized by I'm the editor of my school newspaper and I don't know what's going on. And um, yeah. I, I try to catch like, how do you catch up that? And um, yeah. it's really uncomfortable. Um, you know, I'm supposed to be in charge of something and, and I haven't been. No, I'm and sorry. So, you know, I, I completely out. understand. And nobody else can. It's so traumatizing. It was. And it really was. Oh, and yeah. yeah. Yep. So yeah, and and you're you're sticking out or uh, being odd, pli trying to play catch up. Yes. of homework, and, and, and you still have your weekly lesson plans and all the memorization. Right. I you mean, know? beginning of the school year, like she said, and then one month later, I'm leaving for two weeks. I'm the editor of yeah. my school newspaper, and then I'm coming back, and they're all looking at my me like, "Where the H have you oh, been?" Oh man, you know. Oh yeah, I'm sure you got attitude yeah. because you're like supposed right. to be there. Right. Yeah. 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 Where's the respect the from the two? Then you lost a lot of respect because right. of a their, lot of yeah. respect, oh. and, and uh, my own self esteem is severely damaged. Because Absolutely. I'm, I'm an organized person, but you know, Sarah, can you just talk about that perfectionism that comes from this? What, how does that come about because of this way we have to live? Can you, can you tell me what you've learned? Um, you know, actually, I feel like I saw that a little bit more in my sister. She was the oldest. So I really oh. feel like she was affected by that being the perfect older. She had a lot of pressure put on her to, I feel like she was more motherly to me. Like she was who I went to and still is like, she kind of was my mom more back in the day. Then um, she had to watch me and my brother, you know? So, and she had, she was, they were just really strict with her. And I feel like she's the one that struggled with trying to be that perfect older sister, you know, perfect child. Well, oddly, oh. the Worldwide Church of God tells you, the parents, to train you that way, that the oldest is the example. So they would drill into my head, being the oldest, that you are the example. You're setting the example for your brothers and your sisters. Yes, yes. Responsibility. So I feel like that really fell on her. It did me too. Um, me, you know, I feel like they tried to beat it out of me. It never could. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I'm I'm stubborn. Yay. <laughs> That's God how I feel. Me. I feel like the both yeah, you know they died, but, I don't know why. Um, I remember my mom telling me I prayed for patience. I prayed to God for patience and he gave me you. Like, that's my <laughs> hey, I, I bet it was hard. Was it hard when you got back from the feast or what? Is that what they call it? Tabernacles feast? feast? Tabernacle. Yeah, was yeah. It, was it hard to go to school and explain what happened? Did you have anybody say, hey, what was it? Oh, yeah. yeah. And how do you explain that? I just don't, I don't even remember really what I said. I think you, you, I remember, I think you were kind of told what to say, but I don't even remember what that was. You know, oh, we were at a church event, you know, something. <clears throat> It was just something like that is all you said you did. You, you, you never, never went in detail. Oh, never. I never, I, people might have known, like even later in life that I was in a cult, but I had never, ever talked about it. People, never, even my best friends, besides my best friend I grew up in it with, my other ones, they are just now learning. They're like, wow, Sarah, and there's lots of layers to you, <laughs> you know? I said, yeah, they, they just, they're just learning now. I'm just finally expressing what I, what happened. Could and you imagine, Sarah, if you told them the truth? You said, "Well, actually, what happened was we were celebrating, um, <laughs> and we were we were celebrating that we're the only ones, and that God's going to genocide everybody any day." And then we left Herbert. Yeah. W. We partied, and then we left Herbert W. Yeah, Armstrong all of our money. Could yeah. you imagine? If you oh, my, right. 
Well, you know what? You did. I don't know if you did this, Angela, but I remember sitting in school and thinking, I really like these people. It's really sad. You know, they're not going to come and they're going to die in the lake of fire. And not only that, if your dad wasn't in there. Now, I didn't love my dad any less, but you looked at him different. He didn't come to church. So I feel like um, that's why, like, my mom was really good friends with my best friend was because her dad also wasn't in the church. So we were looked at a certain way because we weren't a family unit. You know, my mom was technically the head of household. Yeah, divided. Yep. So we were always a divided, almost felt divorced before divorced because, you know, yeah. My and dad really, family. really struggled with that, that too. Well, and, I, you know, it's a lot of yeah, I think there. maybe that's why we, I think I told you so. I was just telling my friend, she goes, no, she was telling, she said, Sarah, that's weird. <laughs> so the events that we'd get taken to. So Christmas, we would go. And I think that must be because my dad maybe didn't want us to miss out on like our cousins and aunts and uncles. Right. But then what would happen is when they would open gifts, me and my siblings, we would have to go sit at the top of the stairs or we'd sit underneath the stairs where they would do that. So I really messed with you. So we would be there at these events, but yet Easter, all of it. Couldn't. Yeah. But would. Yeah, so, um, well, and, you know, so any event. She wouldn't even know anything about what goes on because her dad would be the one to encourage her to go because he wasn't in the church. So the mother, her mother would be forced to kind of to take it against her will kind of. And then I bet she was, yeah. Watch and watch everything that was going on. But at least they knew what was happening in the world that they were missing out on. For many of us, we really, we, we would only hear when we got back to school, the Christmas yeah everybody got but you'd want to say well i went to the feast of tabernacles and we got gifts and uh, we went horseback riding and we went down a canoe and we, we went to really nice meals and and we went to church every day and it was wonderful and i made new friends we couldn't say oh anything. yeah you wouldn't say that because they're thinking well well wait a minute i, I kind of know that you don't keep christmas but you're giving exchanging get or you're getting gifts from your parents on uh, and this is uh, October, so it was Chris, October Christmas only different right but you, but you could <laughs> yeah it was like that was our Christmas was the feast yeah. that's when we got the gifts you're absolutely were, right were you guys the only ones would you say in worldwide that they teach that they're the only ones like like Seventh Day Adventists keep the Sabbath but would they be including in those who live or was the worldwiders at that time or their offshoots are they still teaching or did they teach that they were the, that they are the only ones who will live because of the way they worship? Are they the yes, only ones? They're the only ones. And there are lots of offshoots. So there are some offshoots. I can't remember if it's United Church of God, but buy? there are some that they are they are exactly yeah. what they, they go by Herbert W. Armstrong. Yeah. And then there's some please? I think that go by jo Joseph W. Tkach because he changed a few things. We could uh, celebrate birthdays and we could wear makeup. Uh, well, those were the two main things I remember that he changed. And, and, you, and you didn't keep the Sabbath anymore. Uh, and, you know, oh, you did it. Okay, I forgot about that. Yeah, so it was very different. It was kind of Christianized. And okay, and that was their goal. I feel that they, they want to become Christianized because it will keep them from yes. lawsuits. That's do, what I think. Now, are they divided against themselves, or does each of them think? Yeah, that's what divided really uh, the what broke up the the church when Joseph W. Dukach did that. Um, that's when people just know, you know, they couldn't. We we believed all this for this long, and you're just gonna say that this is all a lie now. You know, some people they could. There's no way they're gonna go along with that. So what you what happened is these ministers broke off, and then they started their own cults. So I, you know, I joke. It's not funny though, but I tell my daughter, you have, you know, you get a choice now in my cult. You can go to this one and sell, you know, do what I did, and you can go to this one and celebrate certain things. Like you get a choice now. Yeah. Now so you can't have pork, um, no pork or seafood either, is a is a real big right. one. That's right. Now, what happened to your brother and sister? How, how, what did you tell me that, that what happened to them? Are they still in? Yeah. No. So none of my family is in it anymore. Um, that is actually how my brother met, um, my sister-in-law though, was at a feast. Um, so her family, she still has a lot of family that is in the cult, uh, my sister-in-law, um, and like my best friend, she does as well. So I still, you know, 
You're very I don't know. Calm. It's still kind of, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't totally get away from it, I guess, in a, in a way. No, I don't. With my uh, mother, my mother's still in there very much so, and her husband, and my dad became a Seventh-day Adventist. And so he's got, he understands grace quite a little bit, but yet still is under the law. It's really weird. He says he's under, he's in grace, but yet he's keeping the Sabbath day and you better keep it and you better keep it all. It's, it's kind of, you know, anyway, whatever. He's much more uh, filled with grace than he was ever before, which I'm very grateful for. Uh, but, yes. Yes. And my brothers and sisters are heavily affected, but they don't know it. And then I, I, and, and I ended up getting into a secondary cult that, um, one of my sisters anyway was in with me well two of them but anyway um th that's uh kind of a, a weird thing you know I forgot where I was going to go with that but anyway yeah so but yeah, I no I I, I don't I think we're long. all just kind of maybe starting to realize it actually me and my siblings um I've actually reached out and talked to my sister a lot and she's been great and she actually remembers a lot. So there was some, I was kind of like unsure. Like, so she's the one that helped me remember. I asked before the call so that it was Mr. Swaggerty at first. And then it became uh, Terry Johnson was the second minister that we had. So she can sometimes fill in the gaps for me. Am I remembering this right? Which is really nice. So yeah. I am glad that I do have that. And that I feel like has been good on healing. Sorry, just how long talking have you been out? with my siblings. How long have you been out now? Let's see. I left when I was I, like 15. When you're 15. Okay. Yep. Yep. And it was under, yeah, really like, I think we're going to do two episodes. So I'll more talk about that. Like my yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of exit to freedom. Time. So we have um, 10 minutes. Um, we yeah. Have, well, we and I can just touch medical. base kind of um Critical, right i want to talk about like uh the days of unleavened bread real quick oh, was another okay. really weird right. one well let's do three Where... episodes okay let's talk yeah. about medical on on this next one and let's go ahead i'm fine with that because let's i don't want to go too fast yeah, you know? i want to hear this leaven bread uh, okay let's hear the unleavened bread okay. um that was such a chaotic crazy time of year if you remember that angela okay. it okay. was Yes. Oh my goodness. You had yes. to clean your whole house of any leavening, any bread. So baking soda, cream of tartar, whatever. And I'm talking attics, cupboards, couch, you know, your whole, yeah, everything. All cupboards. So if I'm remembering this right, the, the leavening represented sin in yes. your life, right? Yes. And so you had to get all the sin out of your house. Right. That, a piece of bread? That's a lot of crumbs. Well, I'll, You were on your I'll hands and knees. Yeah scrubbing yeah. in your all in your house i mean all the kids were the adults it was a everywhere it was chaotic you yeah. had to scrub the whole house from behind the refrigerator behind don't leave a crumb behind or you'll burn in the lake of fire right you know i i never heard of this yeah yeah we had to clean it took the refrigerator to be taken out oh the couch had to I, be, yep the the stove had to be removed and get every crumb out of every it. crumb What's crumbs um, got one, to do with it? What's sin, crumbs got to puffs, do with it? A sin puffs up. A piece of crumb leavening, off a piece of bread. You talk about yep. bread it's crumb. So the, supposedly oh, the leavening represented sin in your oh. life. And then I can't remember how long it was, but we actually, then we couldn't eat anything with leavening. So no. we ate the matzo crackers yeah. um, with butter on A them. Like, pieces of crap. <laughs> oh yeah. So we had Wafer. to eat, uh, I don't know, bread, but it didn't have, like, Remember Flat mom bread. would make this weird bread, but it wasn't like bread because it couldn't have the stuff in it. And she put applesauce on top or something. Right. Like. So, so the Israelites yep. le left uh, Egypt and they were, yep. they were they had to quickly make the bread and there was no leaven in it. But it was God said to do it that way. And then they went across, you know, anyway, that was one of the reasons that they they there was a whole period of time when it's Passover and we don't have any bread. And that, that's to, I don't know, somehow I don't remember what the scripture was about. It represented sin, but. There had to have been, uh, but I don't remember. There, yeah, there was. I can't either. And I'm sure there was a scripture behind it. Sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, but one year I remember, you know, we're scrambling around and all of a sudden my mom realizes she didn't clean the toaster. Oh. So, you know, she, did, she threw the whole toaster out. Oh. oh that caused a big, you know, my dad was you know, oh, we didn't have a lot of money. We we're poor. Oh, and she just threw the whole to perfectly good toaster oh, out. Oh, oh my God. gosh, I didn't clean the toaster. It's got to go. Because of the so, crumbs. She want because to of the crumbs in it. Because she'll have to clean it out with her hands. And Are it's a serious? lot of work. So this just is so dead serious. I remember that caused a big argument in the house. Of course. Why wouldn't it? You 
threw away perfectly good toaster over your weird cold. Your dad uses every day. This is shocking. I can't. I, I can't even imagine. Honestly, I can't. Yeah. Grab the toaster. Yeah. Throw out the toaster. There's crumbs. This Don't touch sin. it. I know. And that. Can yeah. you imagine? A it was so fell out of the yeah. Oh my God. The sin. The sin. <laughs> Yeah, this yeah. Is this is insane. So we're gonna say, guys. Sarah. Well, and you had lesson plans also to explain. I, I'm sure back then, and you know, to really solidify why you're why you're doing this and why right. it's so solidify. important. Solidify. So we had lesson plans and stuff. Really, you know, putting this in our brain how yes. important this was to do this and why we needed to do it. Yes. You know, I, I just don't remember quite everything, but I know that it was definitely backed up, you know, by sermons and lesson plans. Um, you know, that was a really weird one. Um, now, I guess this would be a good one to end on, I think. And this was my my worst one. And then the next one, we can kind of go into more of the medical stuff. Yeah, so the worst one for me was Day of Atonement day of atonement we had to fast and not drink water for 24 hours and down to sundown yep what if you're thirsty what if you're a little kid and you're thirsty yeah well guess what i was five and they don't force you but there is so much pressure oh, oh. that of you know i don't know how to word it right so much pressure of how would you put it, Angela, to rite of passage per se, you know, or something. So right. by the time you were five, so when I joined, I was doing it. I think it was five was a pretty common age. Would you say they started having the kids fast? Yeah, yeah. That's about yeah. right. So I, I remember doing it right when I joined. And so I wasn't, I couldn't eat um, or drink water for 24 hours. And I remember getting violently ill. Like I would throw up out in the parking lot, but yet I couldn't, if I drank a sip of water, you okay. were, you you were sinning no you couldn't though right. yeah if you drank you couldn't yeah weird i had no idea yeah yeah so she do you think it was probably a, a psychological fear because you couldn't or do you think that was no be i know if you ate or drank anything like you know i think the same thing you were going to die in the lake of fire there was a certain reason why you were doing that day well, of atonement I, I, I don't know that that. why do you think you got violently sick that's what i mean oh um, you know, I, I really don't know. I think it's just from, um, the nausea of not eating and not having fluids. And so I think it just made me really sick because I remember one other kid, it was a boy and he would always throw up too. Really? And I remember us both being in the parking lot, always throwing up on day of atonement. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. I wonder. What... Um, some people got sick, you know, afterwards when they would eat again. Oh, you know, oh. uh, but for me, it was during the, the process and, um, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, you have a young little growing kid that you're forcing not to eat or drink for 24 hours. Um, that, ain't right. that is not okay. <laughs> that is so unhealthy for a growing yeah. child uh -huh. and it's so traumatic. Um, and I believe it has had a big play in um, a lot of my stomach issues that I've had, you know, developed over the years. Um, my mom, now when I started developing stomach issues these last couple of years, um, and I got diagnosed with diverticulitis, then I started, my mom said, yeah, you always had stomach issues. You always complained about your stomach. Now, we didn't get taken to doctors, though. You know, um, I know I did a few times, so I was maybe one of the lucky ones, actually. Um, but you didn't take aspirin. You didn't take anything um, no. for any pain. Um, if got you a got ill, just thinking about it. <laughs> if you got ill, so say you had a fever, you know, or anything. Um, so I had strep throat. I didn't get taken to the doctor. Well, the let's minister. Say, let's save this part for next yeah. time. Definitely get yeah. into the medical. And I don't want. I want to put all this on the medical part. But that's kind of yeah. how it. It. it uh, yeah, that's kind of the, the. I think the last crazy of uh, the Holy Jewish kind of holidays. I guess also as yeah. well that we celebrated. Yeah. And, and also too, let's see. We got four minutes. Well, you know uh, the whole thing about not being able to eat pork. And, um, you know, you, you couldn't be like your friend. So you go to a grandma and grandpa's house and they serve pork and beans, right? Oh, don't hot dogs. Guess what? Everybody has hamburgers and hot dogs. Why can't you eat pork? 
Uh, unclean animal and anything with a split hoof is okay. unclean. If no. I'm right, yeah, okay. And, and anything, so anything with a split hoof is supposedly unclean. So how about like um, gloves? Like gloves when you put on leather gloves that come from pig. You know, they call it pig skin. Or yeah, it, it seemed like that would be unclean too to put on a glove and sweat in it and have the pig, you know, out of the glove yeah. going into your skin. But you guys could wear gloves and leather. Pig leather and yeah, stuff. I don't think that was ever baseball. That wasn't ever a thing. But it went, but we couldn't eat it. No, and no, we couldn't have. Now this is one it. that um really sticks out. That was horrible to me. I didn't have. Might not seem like a big deal, but in marshmallows, there's gelatin. You can't have that. Right. So they I would could never have a s'mores. No, I didn't taste my yellow. first no, s'mores no. till I was an adult. Why it marshmallows? Has, what are they? It has lard in it. it lard, is... Gelatin or something in it. Oh, something horse big. Hoofs. Gelatin has horse hoofs in it. Oh. Split hoofs, horse hoofs. That's made okay. out of horse hoofs. I heard gelatin has horse hoofs. Right. In it. I mean, okay. this is crazy, guys. This is like science fiction. The gelatin has <laughs> yeah. horse hoofs in it. Yeah. You know, yes. it's like crazy. There's a lot of things we couldn't have. And, and, and even <laughs> the, the little piece of pork that's in the pork and beans. See, you could just take that and throw it out, right? But oh, no, it's going to be oh, so no permeated into the yeah, that, juice. That's what I meant about the oh, yeah, yeah. The pork, yeah, you know, the gloves, the pork, the 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 leather seemed like that would seep into your skin. You're sweating and working in them. So it seemed like that would be just as unclean as like as it would, yeah, it would just cut out everything. You're not eating the, the gloves. Pork. Yeah, no. yeah, you would think so. But it was it was just the food. I can't remember why seafood. Yeah, not, um, not what had to do bottom feeders. Bottom feeders. If they're eating, um, it's they're eating our trash. Like they're dirty. They're dirty. That's right. That's Nothing right. That. But you so know, same. Yeah. I also, um, I never had any seafood till I was adult. Even though yeah. I got out, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not until I was yeah. looking out, I was twenty. No, 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 20, 23, I guess. And until I, before I ever had it. And guess what happened? The weirdest. <laughs> But we are, I was having my anniversary with my former husband and we went to the Cherry Creek Broker, fancy, fancy restaurant. And they served us um, shrimp and shrimp cocktail. Yummy, and, yummy. And, and, yum. and, and it, it tasted, you know, it tasted pretty good. But that night we got violently sick. And, oh, no. and so because there was food poisoning, apparently somehow the sauce, they say usually it's the sauce. And so I we were so sick. I, I, I thought we were going to die. And so we were both so sick. And he's running to the store, even though he's deathly sick, oh, no. and getting the Pepto-Bismol and, and 7-Up and whatnot. And and I didn't know what to do about it. I'd never been sick. And so we, we had all we survived. But I was like, OK. That's it. I'm not eating any of this. I was going to say, did that mess with you thinking yes, that? I bet. I bet you're like, oh, my oh, God. God did like, that. God did that. I, I got this. I, this happened to me. And I've had some really I've had some really bad self-talk that I'm realizing now that I'm doing subconsciously from the from the cult just yeah. stuff like that like oh, this this is happening to me now still because i'm not in there right you know that's i'm it. doing this that's it it's same with weird that yeah same thing yeah it could these be i'm just saying this now she was vomiting at yeah. certain points you vomited i did well when you ate the fit the pork or oh, the, when seafood. I ate the seafood and your brother yeah. vomits when he eats pork that's my mother does too yeah she they both sick. vomit well, when they eat mother, and i wonder if this is a program that they've installed the, their religious ideal program and subconsciously well, you're rejecting the Oh, that could, that could I, be, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. It's amazing what our brains can do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It is the first time I've had it, but I could, and so that, I could easily see that making Me you too. sick just on yeah, that. In that, in that case, so my ex was not a believer. No, not but, your ex, Dave, your brother. My brother, yeah, I know, but I was I got sick from oh. true food poisoning. Oh, okay. Um, which you know it can happen. Well, right? you sin but, against yeah. God. But, but what are the odds, right? Well, of my course, your okay. first time. And so you can bet it was a long Sorry time before time. I ever uh, t tried that again. You know what I mean? <gasps> right. Well. So the first time, uh, me and my mom, I actually think, I'm pretty sure we were together. We did it. We flew out to California for the first time. And then we went to a fancy restaurant and we had, you know, I think it was mussels and stuff. Oh. And I remember yeah. my stepdad was cracking up at me and mom because yeah, we mom. were, we were saving like the mussels, like, I mean, Oh, this is cool. Like, like we wanted to take it home. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good, huh? I think we saved like the mussel shells. Oh. Like it was oh. it's so gross. Right. Oh. But it was Not a good idea. Get it, all quick. <laughs> it was new to us. We were like, this is so cool. Like, 
your so dad, weird now but your dad yeah. was laughing his head off don't you know it oh my god yeah so it, it, it's it's definitely now because you definitely don't just start celebrating everything no. i know that once no. we even quit no. it's still it's still weird yeah yes. yeah yes now, um, tomorrow is easter yeah. everybody tomorrow is easter and uh how are you what do you do on easter now what are you gonna do um, well, let's see. I actually, you know, just nobody's in it. So I'm going to my brother's, but I, I think the kids did some type of Easter egg hunt today. And then we're just kind of hanging out and just doing whatever family. And we are, we made sure we decided, I think we're definitely having pork. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make up for lost. I actually just joked. I was like, yes. I was like, we're all going to burn in the lake of fire. <laughs> like I, I have a, I kind of um, have to joke with these things, you know. You have to right. find a silver lining and a and a way to laugh at the craziness. I'm scared um, now. I'm scared. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. So, so we are very happy. We're all gonna eat pork tomorrow. I don't know some kind. <laughs> yeah, some ribs, some ribs or something. Some pork pork hands, hands, really right. yeah, yeah, we're <laughs> embracing, you know, not um, not having to constrict to that rule. Um, yeah, so, I'm so glad I get to have you, uh, uh, Sarah, because, you know, when we put this out onto the station, the Facebook page, the YouTube channel, all that, I usually get hammered with these people saying you rebellious, you know, piece of crap because you're, and they give me all the things the scripture has to say. And, and I'm like, you know, dude, you don't have to be on my station. You don't have to be on my Facebook page. You can go elsewhere. Why do you have to be? Right. You chose to come to my channel. If you want to get well, stay on my station. But if you don't and you just want to attack me, bye-bye. I don't care. Yep. Go away. And I have my reasons. I have done my research. I have my reasons for doing what I do. I'm not just rebellious. I have done my research and I have done my praying and I have done my, my heart searching and all of it. And so, you know, they, they don't have any place to judge me but they do oh absolutely 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 they're gonna judge and what this is i think uh something i've realized recently a good note to leave on is you know what happened to all of us to happen to you dan angela anybody that's in these these cults and if anything like this is sounding familiar you might be in a cult and not even know it um right. that has happened to other people too they're like read about, oh my God, oh, there goes our name, Worldwide Church of God, not knowing they were in a cult. So um, none of this was our fault. What happened to this? None of this was no. our fault. We are not no. to blame. We Victim. shouldn't have, feel any shame or fear. The only, All that's our responsibility is to heal, you know, and however, and that's however that looks to you. Amen. You know, and everybody's different how they're going to find it. Maybe that's a group, a support group. Uh, maybe it's telling your story. Maybe it's journaling. Maybe it's therapy. So I think that that's that's really important. Is just people know that it this wasn't your fault. What happened to you? Right. And I'm sorry that it did. Right. I know how much it hurts. I know how painful it is. I know how it follows you still to this day. Um, but we're here to let you know you're not alone. Amen. Amen. Right? Well, you're not alone. Good ending. And we're looking forward, Sarah, to the next two. Um, yes, uh, me too. One of three, right? Yes, one of three. And we're yeah, that sounds great. The I... medical and Sarah, we appreciate oh, your courage. Oh, yes. And you know, your courage will, will help set other people free. Amen. Um, you have no idea. I uh, really hope so, because this was such a big cult and it's not talked about enough no. and it's still rampant and oh, going. I can't well, believe there hasn't been a documentary done on that or Jehovah's Witness. If what you're telling me, this is so similar. Oh, so I'm hoping so um, this will help maybe, you know, embrace change. Yeah. And it will. Uh, people, it will. It will. And um, you, you will because guess what? I was scared to do this, everybody. I was, I was scared. I was nervous. Um, but I can't tell you how good it feels uh, to come on and be validated and tell my story. And no, I wasn't crazy. No, <laughs> it was crazy pioneers. what happened to me. <laughs> yeah, you and Angela will be pioneers because somebody has to start it. And a lot of times it's women. They have the courage for whatever reason. They they come out because like, like me and Angela said, we've talked to a lot of worldwide writers and they're vehemently defensive about their re religiosity and they won't even open to discussing anything, but to see you talk freely and clearly and got your head back on your shoulders gives them hope 
that there's life beyond this cult. There's life beyond the Jehovah's Witnesses and life more abundantly without yes. all these man-made restrictions and foolishness yeah. and craziness and yeah. you know and I did exactly know. and guess what I'm 45 and I'm still finding out what I like to do you know and yeah. hobbies and crafts and that's it's great it's fun it, it's it is fun for the first time in my life I'm I'm trying to figure out my identity right because I, uh -huh. I I didn't really know what it was no because we're not we're not really taught to have one just get married and have a kid yeah shut up and wow. you know shut up and be be an obedient wife Right. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I always say, you know, a child is to be seen and not heard in that church, right? Yeah. Well, it was the same for a wife. Oh, right. A wife yeah. is to be seen and not heard. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. just hold your legs, cook me a meal, woman. I'm yeah. sorry. Yep. Just being honest. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. No, you're absolutely right. So um, you know, I'm glad that you're able to be open minded, Dan. I appreciate that too, you know, because just from what you're telling me, it sounds like it's harder for some of the men which that doesn't really surprise me, especially if it was set up anyway, like our cult, oh, because so you were really, women were really looked yeah. down on. Oh. And so that doesn't just go away either. I'm assuming no. for a lot of men, no. you know, that that was something that was, you know, ingrained in them from young. Yes. Dad so, had to learn how to treat women. He had me, he was taught by amazing. Most of my women, women, most of my teachers, when I got on Jehovah's Witnesses were women. And the women told me, you're going to have to eat shit if you want to learn from me. And I was like, who the hell do you think you are? You're a woman. You know? <laughs> and, but it was yeah. lots of women. I'd say it was probably 10 women back to back were some of my profoundest teachers. And it was humbling. And I was like, yeah, why can't women pay the bills? Why is that a man's job? Or why why can't they think equally and have a, even maybe a better decision and why do they seem to have it together a lot more in a lot of different areas? And so you start breaking out of these paradigms that the head of Every Je family's... God, Jesus is Jehovah. The head of the congregation is Christ and the head of yeah. woman is man. And you have all this dogma and you yeah. realize it never was to be that way. A woman is, is a 100% equal partner, partnership with gifts Absolutely. and abilities to, to do and, and to complement each other, not Lord. Uh, well, you, what a great, better unit you, you make when you do that too, right? They really right. set it up for them to like butt against each other, but you could not get divorced. Absolutely. You know, they, yeah, yeah, they, they. I think they set it up for the both of them not to be happy, you oh, yeah. know. I agree. Well, the, the husband go do whatever he wanted to, you know. He could That's cheat. Right. It was something that the wife was always doing wrong. It was never the husband, right. and That's so okay. I, it yeah, was. I there was just yeah. Well, we will. We that. will. I know that you guys got to get somewhere. And we obviously we could. Airport. We have to go pick up some. Well, thank you, thank you, yes. Sarah. Good job. Yes. And we'll be yeah. in touch. We'll get another one set up. Thanks for everybody for listening, and thank, thank you, you so much. Thank for you for um, having me on today. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. You're beautiful. Have a great Wonderful. day. Yes. All right. Take Thank care. You. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.